My first guest tonight is a comedian, writer, producer, and my brother from another network. Please welcome Larry Wilmore. <laughs> That little uh, mishap earlier, you know. Brother. No, yeah. it happens every night. Easy. This is the first time we broadcast it, though. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks for making time oh, to be here, pleasure. my man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know, I'm going to take a page out of your book right now, if you don't mind. Oh. Okay. A little bit you're not using right now. Let's keep it 100, okay? That's right. I'm we keep not it 100? using it right now. Can we keep it 100 right I'll now? I'll keep it 100. Actually... How do you feel uh, about the sudden and unexpected cancellation? How do you feel about that? Are you trying to get me canceled again, Stephen? What's going on? No, no, I'm just no, curious. No, you know, keep it 100. How do you I know. It? I will keep it 100. Um, I am very disappointed about it. I thought we'd be on through the election. You know, you never know what's going to happen. It's real tough when you're doing a TV show because you're thankful that you're doing a TV show. Of course. But, but you know, we hadn't talked to them for a while, so it was almost like you were in a relationship, but you were the one that didn't know it was over. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, how's it going, Larry? It's going great. What? <laughs> so. Um, you know, I'm very sad for it, but I'm very proud of the work that we did, you know. Um, so I like to live in the abundance of just being grateful for what we had to do, and hopefully I can do something like that again sometime. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, so that's our thing. One, of the, yeah. one of the things, I want to point out something. Uh, oh, I will say this, though. What? I will say this, though. I am very upset that they did cancel the Brothers show when all the best, worst racial stuff started happening, you know. Yeah. I mean, no, Hillary calls Trump a bigot. He calls her a bigot. You know, he's going on his Mexican tour right now. <laughs> you know, you got a quarterback who will stand for the national anthem for racial issues. All the best racial stuff happens now when I lose my show. Oh, my god. That's gosh. not fair. It's always the last place you look. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things you, you know, one of the things you, what I liked about the show, from the yes. very first moment I was on air, I knew it was a special show because I love this shot. And I want to ask you about something. Oh, I love great. that map back here. Yes. Okay. Yes. That spoke volumes. Why'd you make that choice? And Thank I got you. a follow up question after you answer that. Uh, absolutely. That actually, Steve Bodo, who was on The Daily Show, actually oh, had sure. that. Sure, Steve's map. great guy, yeah. Yeah. And uh, for me, it kind of represents, people would always ask me, and I talked about this in our last show, why is the map upside down? And I said, well, I disagree with your premise because, you know, upside down is just an opinion. Right? If you were out in space, it might have any orientation. Right? We've just agreed as a culture to call that a certain way. But you know, if, we, uh, if I disagree with your premise on that and decide to look at the world in any way that I want, then that's what our show is. You know? So we decided our show is we're going to look at the world in a different way. I don't know if I said that the right way, but that's pretty much what that no, was. No, no, I understand it. Yeah. I understand it. Uh, what happened to this map? Because I love this map. <laughs> I have no idea. I hope I no one stored it. This way, because that know. would be very, that would be, that would be very upsetting. Wilmore, that, make, that makes no sense to me yes. now. I don't understand. Mr. Wilmore, you forgot your mat. <laughs> John Stewart was on your last show. Yes, and uh, he said that the show started a conversation. What conversation do you hope you were starting, and 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 mm. and how do you think that conversation can continue? Well, John was great. John, I say, I'm he... not a fan. I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't want to get in that tip right now. No. <laughs> No, John is great. You know how John is. He's like one of the most brilliant guys. He's super supportive. Frustratingly right most of the time. Right. When you, like, very few times I've ever gone to the mat with him over, like, no, no, that's not how this is going to work, exactly. like, comedically. Mm -mm. <laughs> very frustrating. I cannot say the words that I want to say on the number of times he right. was right and I was wrong. I can say it because I'm only on here once, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to use a bad word. So, anyway, so John said he wanted to do a show where people could be on who don't get represented all the time, you know, and hear from voices that don't get a chance to be heard. All the time, and uh, kind of underrepresented voices. And it was funny. John said, "Larry, you can go to any problem in the country right now, and if you scratch it hard enough, underneath it's going to be probably race, class, or gender that's going to be the issue there." And I never really thought of it that way. And he felt it would be nice to be able to do these issues on a show. They were tough issues to do, but he felt uh, we could do a comedy show. You know, having a discussion about the things that are hardest to talk about in this country. Well, one of the things you guys were talking about, which I really lack, liked, you know, uh, on your show, and it's going to be even more sort of poignant as we go forward, is what you call the unblackening. Yes. So That's explain right. to the people out there who may not know what the unblackening is. Well, that is uh, uh, President Obama leaving the White House. Mm -hmm. Yes, the White House is currently being unblackened. Mm -hmm. yes. It's still it's still at peak blackening right now. It's at peak blackening right now. Yeah. It's a, I would call it max blackening at this point. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, it is maxed out. As well. And I told the president, very, be careful, make sure he takes all of his cultural appropriate stuff out of the White House mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before anyone comes in, because uh, you don't want someone coming in going, cocoa butter, what is this? You know, get, <laughs> right, get that stuff out. Right, okay. cocoa butter. Exactly. Just one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now that sounds uh, delicious to me. Yeah. Well, uh, it can be. It can okay. Be. I, I, well, uh, I, without going into any details, I don't think it's yes. appropriate. Is that I was lucky enough to be invited to uh, the president's birthday party a couple of weeks oh, ago, yeah. and I guess the brother's invitation got lost in the mail, Steve. <laughs> Well, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not many. Not like because, I was busy doing anything. Well, what, yeah. one of the things that I'd say is yes. that uh, uh, you looked around the room, and then one of the things that struck you was like, yeah. huh, I, this is about as diverse of a party as probably ever been at the White House. Yeah. At one point, I had to go over to the portrait of McKinley and explain to him what was happening in yeah. the room. Because <laughs> he, looked, he looked surprised and, and a little shocked. Yeah, it's great when the white people make it a diverse party. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it really felt, yeah, I felt that way. Yeah. yeah. But it is cool. It is one of the lasting legacies of the presidency. People always ask me, what did I think would be the, you know, the, the best thing to come out of this presidency? And I think it's the example of Obama being the president more than any policy he might have. Um, this is another thing I told the president at the correspondence dinner that when I was a kid, you couldn't even think of a black man being a quarterback. That's the truth, you know. I mean, the, a black man couldn't even lead a football team. And now, to see him leading the free world, you know, words couldn't even express it, you know. And that, to me, the fact that kids won't even question that that's an issue. And now we, the, that may happen with a woman in the White House, you know, that it won't be an issue that a woman can lead the country. It won't be a question anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, if that happens. I know. Who knows? Well, Who knows? that is... Uh, <laughs> That leads I'm just me. Saying. That leads me to another uh, another uh, yeah. another subject here, which is that you and I have both hosted the White House Correspondents Dinner. Yes, and I have to say I was very inspired by Stephen uh, when you called President Bush your nigga. I could not. <laughs> I could not believe you did that, Stephen. Well, very few people appreciated the courage brave. that took me to say. I thought it was very brave. <laughs> yeah. Thank I, you. I kind of stole it from you, so uh, well, I just wanted to give you props, man. We're proud. Oh, you got it, baby. You got it. You got it. <laughs> so you got what's it, that? baby. That's you got it. <laughs> well, what, so that is that is a really tough room. Yes. What it people is. at home don't understand is that all they ever see on TV is like the dais and a couple right. of people in the front row. It's three thousand people in that room. It's a Absolutely. huge room. Absolutely. I had uh, news people flipping me off during it, which was great. I, no way. No, I think Don Lemon did. He kind of hugged me afterwards. Wolf Litzer was really upset. You know. <laughs> I think uh, he was. No, he wasn't really upset. He was really <laughs> yes, upset. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. I, I really hate that ass, <laughs> Larry Wilmore. <laughs> I don't think we have to bleep it now, that, right? That's the thing. We don't have to bleep that because I said the word separately. No, but okay. Stephen, that was that was my whole joke. I did a joke about Obama and drones, and I said, speaking of drones, and I brought up Wolf Blitzer, so that was actually my joke. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really uh, fun night unless you make fun of somebody who's in the room. I know, but you know? I, I thought it was a roast, you know. We're supposed to roast people. It right? is a roast. It's a it roast. Is a roast. Yeah, Those people yeah. have nuclear launch codes, but they can't take a yeah. joke. Yeah. Oh. They have nuclear launch codes. They do. I didn't know that. Oh, cool. oh. I want. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I want to rule the world, but heaven forbid you should take a you know a poke at me. I know. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. It, it was fun, though. I really enjoyed it. You, know, you got to hang around afterwards. I know, yeah. You can't leave the room. It's not like there's a limo waiting for you to dive through the window and get away <laughs> as much as you want to. I know. And because of that type of room, you don't know how you did, you know, because there are a number of people who weren't too happy with what you did. And so, like, right. you know, it's like uh, they don't want to look at you. You know, it's like you don't want to name the animals you might have to eat, you know, if you live in a farm. <laughs> they don't want to make eye contact because they know you have to be dismissed. Like. Right, exactly. But then there are other people that liked it, but you have no idea where you stand. And your family, you can't trust. They're like, it was great. Like, I don't know if I can trust you, you know. <laughs> you, you love me. That gets in the way of a real opinion. Do you know, know Harry J. Lennox? Do you know, do you no, know Harry is? Harry is a very, he's a guy with North oh, Russia. He's, he's an actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, he's yeah, awesome, yeah. yeah. He's a great actor. Right, right. He's a very, uh, very dignified, very talented yeah. African-American yeah. actor. We went to Northwestern University together, yeah. but I had not seen Harry in like 20 years. Right. And he was there the night I did it. Oh, wow. And I'm on the dais and I've just finished and yeah. nobody's looking at me. Like no one will make eye contact. Right. And, and, and Harry comes up and, and, and he's at the dais and he, everybody's still up there. And he goes, hey man, that was really good. I said, Harry, it was, it's, it's, really, it's really great to see you. Um, I don't think these people liked it. Right. And Harry is so wonderful, so dignified and just such got a fantastic voice. He leans back and he goes, 
these people. <laughs> he said it there? That was good. He, he said, said it there. there. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. So, Larry? That's fantastic. These people. Yes. That was good. That's what I'm talking about. Larry Wilmore, everybody. We'll be right back.